Hello, my strong, strong friends. In today's video, I'm going to be going over budget-friendly, high-protein foods. Yeah, I almost forgot for a second there, but I remembered. I remembered because I just recorded it and I've been talking about it for hours. <laughs> I'm gonna cover a couple different topics. I will list down below timestamps if there's something specific that you want me to, that you want to listen to. First is protein prices and comparing different sources of protein or different high protein sources across each other and suggestions on the cheapest proteins that you might want to take a look at next time you go grocery shopping. Also, I'll have suggestions on where to shop and get cheap food and how to make the process of budgeting and finding that cheap food a little bit easier. I will give you advice on how to avoid eating the same things all the time. I know that was a big concern. I asked you guys on Instagram what you really wanted need to cover in this video and that was a big concern for you guys like how do I eat healthy without wanting to vomit if you guys are new here please do subscribe to my channel and if you do like this video and want to see more nutrition videos give me a like so that I know All right, you guys, we're first going to start, the first section of this video will be a protein prices chart. A couple of notes before I get into the actual food is we will be sorting these in order from the lowest price to the highest price. We'll also have some vegan and vegetarian options, but so everything's clear, we will note it with a little icon and let you know as we're going through them. Prices are listed by 30 grams of protein. Price that will show will hopefully Hopefully give you a good idea of how much like one serving or one meal of this particular ingredient will run you. Now of course you might not need 30 grams of protein. You might want more or need more than 30 grams of protein per meal. To understand how much protein you want in a day, we usually recommend one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. So not total body mass, but lean body mass. If you have a way of calculating that, that will be helpful to estimating how much protein you wanna get, especially, especially if you're here to build muscle. The reason we're focusing First, on the different sources of protein and focusing this video so much on protein and having high protein meals is because you might be here because you want to build muscle, right? Last thing, so that we're clear, these prices were found on Amazon. Amazon has a grocery delivery service. You may find cheaper or more expensive options. We try to sort by price with reasonable reviews. And also there are one or two that is kind of hard to get on Amazon. Um, so we'll be sure to note that so that everything's clear for you guys. Let's just go into the list of ingredients that we're gonna start with. The first ingredient, the cheapest one that you could possibly get are lentils. Keep in mind that lentils are one of the most dense overall on the list. So it's really great. This is awesome if you need to just get more calories in general in. If you're looking for dense foods at a low cost, then this will be a great option for you. You can use them on top of salads, in chili, or any kind of soup. So you can make vegetarian burgers with lentils. The next ingredient is not vegan, but it is vegetarian. These are egg whites, probably one of my most important staples. I eat egg whites probably every day. Okay, so recipes that I like are an egg white omelet. You can also use this as a bulking ingredient if you're making something like protein pancakes or you're making something like fried rice. You have a carb source and you can just stir fry it and add some egg whites to sort of give you that fried rice feeling, right? Uh, you can also use it for protein smoothies or shakes that you're making. The next ingredient are garbanzo beans, same kind of deal. These are even more dense than the lentils. So again, if you are trying to find a good macronutrient like profile or really focused on dialing those in, keep that in mind that the garbanzo beans and the lentils will have more carbs, but that's great if you're just looking to get the most dense food for your dollar. For garbanzo beans, you can roast them and make like dry, like crispy garbanzo beans for a snack. You can also use them for curries or as a topping for a salad. The next high protein ingredient that you definitely want to get if you're not a vegan is whey protein isolate. So this is a supplement that you can use, especially if you're having trouble getting protein in your day-to-day -day diet. I love to have shakes or like a protein a smoothie or a smoothie bowl and I'll combine some of these high protein sources so that I can you know combine ingredients and make a great protein meal. 
probably the most bro of them all is boneless, skinless chicken breast. Now, I for the life of me could never figure out how to make chicken taste good when I cooked it, and then I found and discovered the slow cooker. We like to batch slow cook just a ton of chicken. We'll probably get like one or two pounds and cook it all together at the beginning of the week. For this, we'll just keep that on hand and it's kind of like we have a prepped ingredient for many different meals. We like to put it in like chicken and rice bowls, kind of like a chipotle bowl. We will use the chicken for that. Usually it's seasoned with some sort of taco seasoning. We'll use it for tacos and burritos, also on top of omelets. And we'll use it for chili or soups. You know, you can kind of just make chicken noodle soup or chili if you're feeling like you need some comfort food and then just throw some chicken that's already prepped and already cooked in there. You already know that it tastes great. Uh, you do not have to be a great cook to slow cook anything, that's for sure. The next ingredient is tofu. This is a vegan option. You can use it for miso soup, which is one of my favorite things, salads, Korean inspired bimbibap with veggies, and then throw some tofu as your protein source on top of that. Another staple of mine is ground turkey breast. Usually we try to get the 99% lean version. Great way to cook this, especially if you don't know how to cook, which I can attest to, is to mix um, a pan or a jar of salsa in with the ground turkey and just cook it in a pan. That again, similar to the pulled chicken breast, is great for use in rice bowls, on top of salad. You can use it in omelets or your egg scrambles, and of course, tacos and burritos. Fat-free Greek yogurt. I like to get just plain so that I'm not getting any extra calories or added sugars. So I use this again in smoothies, smoothie bowls. You can add it in oatmeal. You can also use it as a way to make like lower calorie or higher protein dressings. Sometimes I'll use Greek yogurt instead of sour cream for on top of chili or on top of dishes that call for sour cream. Canned tuna in water might not sound like the most appetizing, but this really is a great source of protein and it is really cheap. If you are dairy free, then you might wanna think about pea protein. Same as the whey isolate option, you can mix this in smoothies, smoothie bowls, and oatmeal. Use it as a protein supplement as you will. And as we get more and more into the more expensive uh, sources of protein, you might your mouth might be watering, especially after the pea protein. Uh, sirloin steak, uh, and this is a price for grass-fed sirloin steak. We, we usually use this on top of salad or as a main course, and we'll grill it um, with rice and veggies on the side. And of course, a ribeye, just so that you see the price of a ribeye. Okay, that's it for the protein sources. This video is gonna be really long, I'm realizing, so we'll get right into the next section. <laughs> So my first suggestion is to look at a CSA or a community supported agriculture program. Um, this is like a membership or subscription base where you pretty much sign up to work with a farmer and other people in your community do it as well so that the farmer delivers it either to you, usually they deliver it to like a public school or a public space so that everyone picks it up at the same time. Sometimes it depends, you can go and all shop together, just get access to shop at this place or they will deliver it right to your door. Outside of the convenience of using a CSA, usually the food is typically more fresh. It does cut down on packaging and waste, and of course it's more sustainable. It does support the farmer because the farmer is able to take your subscription before they actually give you the vegetables and support their business and help them you know, generate income so that they can keep their business alive. There are some drawbacks in some states. The CSAs only operate from like June to October. I'm in California now and um, it operates January to January so it operates year-round so if you are in a warmer climate you might have that benefit but it is unfortunate of course because you can't farm in the winter in Ohio um, so just keep that in mind if you do sign up for one of these programs another option or alternative to getting a CSA if you wanted to pick your own vegetables instead of having someone pick it for you uh, you can go to a farmers market they are a little bit um, it's hard to get to because usually they're at scheduled times so unless you have free time to go to a farmer's market, it may not be as convenient as going to a grocery store. Farmer's markets will use less packaging. You do know that you're supporting the 
farmer off the bat. It is a good way to get local fresh produce. I do have resources for more information on farmers markets and CSA programs. Uh, the best, I think, uh, website is localharvest.org. There are a couple of others, so I'll leave them down below, but localharvest.org is a great place to find a CSA near you or a CSA that delivers near you. I did get a couple of questions on people asking, is it important for me to focus on eating organic off the bat? Or, you know, is that really a big indicator of success? Or will that really help my fitness journey? And I do want to say that if you're watching this because you really need to budget and you really need to save, I would say that I wouldn't concern yourself too much with making sure that you're getting like the, the freshest, most local, most organic ingredients. Um, if you are really budgeting and in a place right now where you can't really afford to do those things, I wouldn't get discouraged. I think you can still make, 100%, you can make huge progress by just eating healthier foods and by having a good calorie uh, and macronutrient balance. So I wouldn't concern yourself too much, especially if you can't afford, and I say afford not just price-wise, but also time-wise. Some of us do, just don't have the time to focus on on, you know the details of our where our food is coming from so if you're in that place I wouldn't get discouraged and I wouldn't concern yourself too much at all before we get to talk about cooking I do want to give you some last money saving tips in the grocery store these it's funny because money saving tips and healthy eating tips usually go hand in hand even though it seems like they don't even though McDonald's seems so cheap and friendly so the first tip is to go in with a list have a plan, go in with a list. If it's not on the list, then you do not get it. Grocery stores are tricky places because they are designed to have you buy more, of course, and they are designed to show you sales. A another tip that I have is to use the website mygrocerydeals.com. This was actually sent to me by one of you on Instagram, so thank you so much. This will help you scout deals before you even get into the grocery store so that you can add them to your list. So on the site, you can just select the grocery store that you plan on going to and see the deals for this week. Make your list based on those sales that they have. That way, you know you're planning to get healthy food and also you are not going to get distracted by any other sales. Another big tip, you probably heard this before, is to stay on the perimeter of the grocery grocery store. So the produce aisle, the pr protein aisle, produce and protein, your eggs and yogurt, those are all in the perimeter. They're not in the inner aisles. I do recommend staying in the grocery store for like 45 minutes, getting in and getting out so that you're following your list, you're not getting distracted, just going in and going out. Whenever you do have to go into an inner aisle, a good tip is to just go in and out the same end that you came in. Um, that way you're not just moseying around in the grocery store. Okay, in this third section, I am going to give you a list of my grocery staples or the things that I just always have in my house. It is a pretty simple list. And if you follow me on Instagram or if you follow me on anything, you, these will look familiar. The list is pretty simple. The staples that I always have in my house are chicken breast, ground turkey, egg whites, Greek yogurt, spinach, onion, bell peppers, avocado, I'm almost done, olive oil, rice or pasta, frozen berries, and whey protein. So I truly think that if you have those ingredients, you will be fine. Will you have the most exciting various diet? Probably not, but with these staples, I can make tons of different dishes and you can combine those ingredients, those simple ingredients to make a lot of different things. I'm gonna give you guys tips on how to spice and spruce things up in the last section of this video. I know on Instagram when I got into the fitness industry, a lot of people love to prep out 21 meals on Sundays. And that to me sounds so gross to prep out something on Sunday and then be still eating that thing that you prepped and put all the ingredients in together and it's just been sitting in the fridge for forever. If you do like prepping your entire meals and taking them on the go, then I'd recommend doing it twice a week. So prepping on Sunday and maybe prepping again on Wednesday, just so that your meals stay fresh and they're more enjoyable and you're not wanting to completely switch up whatever that you're doing the following week. Instead of prepping my meals all together, I'll instead prep my ingredients. So of course, I already mentioned that I like to cook all of my chicken breasts at the beginning of the week in the slow cooker. I'll season it with tacos seasoning seasoning most usually and I will cook that and then put it into Tupperware so that anytime I want to make a meal 
I will add it to something. I'll also put rice and also have spinach, raw spinach on hand. I always have the ingredients prepped and separated so I can just make my meal, microwave it, and then I'm good to go. Other things that I do is the vegetables that I get, so like onions and green peppers or any kind of bell pepper, I will chop them up ahead of time so that whenever I'm ready to make like an egg scramble or a spaghetti bolognese, bol bol bolognese, you know what I'm saying? Have them already chopped. I will just grab them, throw them in the pan, and then I don't have to worry about the prep part of cooking. I can just combine things and cook them all together, and then I'm ready to go. And our final and last section of this video is how to avoid eating the same things and getting too bored with your meal. My mom didn't teach me how to cook, although she will tell you that she did. So I never knew the basics. And if you're in that boat, then don't worry. <laughs> like, like I'm 30 and I just kind of learned how to cook recently. Things that you wanna think about that you can add to pretty much any meal and it will taste a lot better are fresh herbs, dried spices, citrus juice, and like chopped nuts. You could add those on top of a meal and it will immediately taste so much better. Also, other tips are to cook with garlic and saute onions. Those will just bulk up and like add so much flavor to the meals. If you think about like choosing a specific region flavor profile that you prefer. For us, you can see there's a lot of like Mexican or Southwest flavor profiles that we prefer. We do a lot of like tacos or like taco seasoning. Some that you want to think about, so the Mexican like things that we like to use, cilantro, cumin, chilies, and lime. If you like Indian food and want to explore that, cumin, curry powder, turmeric, and ginger, and then Italian, oregano, basil, capers, and olives. All of those go together. It is nice to like choose those aromatics and garnishes that kind of fit together so that you know your pairings will be smart and they'll like spruce up any dish. All right, you guys, that's all for this video. I hope that some or any of this was helpful. If it was, please do give the video a like so that I know and comment your suggestions down below if you wanna see anything specific. I know Ryan was discussing maybe doing like a Costco haul and sharing that with you guys uh, because of course bulk buying can be really helpful. If you're new here and this is the first video that you ever watched of mine, holy crap, congratulations. I usually make them more concise and more short. Uh, so please do subscribe to my channel if you are new here and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!